Hello, I'm Judy Stiles. Thank you for joining us this week on Newsmakers. Our focus today is on an agency that helps people throughout the community year-round. We're also going to take a look at how volunteers helped our community on a special day in the summer. Joining me is Dwayne Dryling with the United Way of Southwest Missouri and Southeast Kansas. Thank you for being here today. Good morning or good afternoon and thank you. <laughs> United Way, uh, Southwest Missouri, Southeast Kansas. Let's start off with just a basic definition for viewers. What are we talking about in terms of area served and what you so, have? So United Way of uh, Southwest Missouri and Southeast Kansas is comprised of four counties, mm -hmm. uh, Jasper Newton County on the Missouri side and Crawford and Cherokee County on the Kansas side. Through those four counties and, and working um, with those communities in, in those counties, we fund 36 agencies, but more importantly than those 36 agencies, we ask the agencies to apply for funding for specific programs within their agency, um, such as a, a summer camp program mm -hmm. or an after school program or uh, a adult literacy program. Um, and we fund 49 programs, almost 50 programs in our community that are reaching out and touching people's lives every single day. Um, and, and we ask that those, those programs that are applied for for funding uh, fit into one of our four categories of education, health, income, and safety. Okay, so four building blocks or four categories as you refer to yeah, it. They, we right. call them our four pillars, mm -hmm. uh, four pillars of service back to the community. Now, the funding that you mentioned, it is project-based, so it's not just a blank check to a certain organization saying, here, do it. They have to come to you and say, we have this program that needs help. I exactly. Um, we know that donors want to see their dollars at work in the community. So it isn't just about funding um, like the Boys and Girls Club, but a specific program within those Boys and Girls Club so that we can go back to the donor and say, because of that 50 hundred, five hundred dollars that you gave to United Way, here are the people that we were able to help. Here mm -hmm. are the children that received after school educational opportunities. Um, these are the people that were helped by the community clinic um, to receive prescription assistance. And so very specific so we can drill down into those numbers and say here are the the statistics of the impact that United Way is having on our community. Well, impacting year-round through those fundings of those programs in the summertime, uh, previous to recording this program, you had a special day, a day of action. That's and right. Tell us a little bit about how this has been around for a while. This People has been around for many, many years. Mm -hmm. I've been with United Way in various capacities for many years, and it used to be called Day of Caring, right. and now it's called Day of Action. So a lot of people will use both terms. But, but basically, the, the premise is nationwide, through United Way, we are asking volunteers to get involved in their community on one day out of the year. This last year, or this uh, it was held on June 19th. Mm -hmm. It's typically always on uh, June 21st is the National Day of Action. Looking at our community, we know that the Friday before was probably the best time to get our volunteers out in the community. So, so this gives a chance for volunteers who may not have had opportunity to work with agencies to go right inside and help them out with certain that's projects. Right. That's right, and, and we really capitalize on our business. And, and that's the beauty of United Way. We have those business relationships. We have those business partners. Mm -hmm. And so um, calling on our business partners that have those volunteers that you know can provide that time for them to go out and get involved with an agency um, is really the meat and potatoes of this event. And so you know our, our partners, Empire District, uh, uh, Commerce Bank, uh, a lot of our I companies. Missouri Southern Missouri, was involved, right? <laughs> Missouri Southern, yeah, we had a lot of fun with the girls' <laughs> basketball team and, and some other uh, people coming out from Missouri Southern. So a lot of our business partners across, across the community say, this is a great opportunity for our employees to get in and see firsthand the work that your agencies do. Well, I know you had a lot of different things going on, and not, we received, of course, a news release, but I think to help people envision and find out a little bit more about what it means, I'd like to show them a little bit of, we have some video uh, shot by some of our students here, Missouri Southern, uh, Kristen Hanna and Deidre Morris went out and actually visited the day of uh, action, caught some of the action. So great. Let's pause at this point and let people take a look at what Sounds happened. Sounds great. Day. Thanks, Judy. I'm out at Macaulay High School today for the United Way's Day of Care. The United Way does positive works all around the Joplin area and southwest Missouri, and today is no different. They have teamed up with the Joplin Association of the Blind and Arvis Bank to play a little game of beeper ball. I'm joined today with the director of the Joplin Association of the Blind, Stephanie Mann, to talk a little bit more about today's events. How are you today, Stephanie? Good. Thank you very much. So can you tell us a little bit about what beeper ball is first off? 
Well, it was a great learning experience for me today as well. <laughs> My first time to ever really be involved in the actual game, you know, what's going on. But Beeper Ball has a beeping ball that is hit off of a tee, and we, it only has two bases that you run to. But in order to know which base you run to, there's a toggle switch that makes each base, one or the other, make a beeping noise so that the person who hits the ball knows which direction to go to by using their sense of hearing. Okay, so that's part of the game is that's that you have to <laughs> run you to, to certain play base. Blindfolded if you have sight or if you're blind, you know, you don't need that blindfold. Okay, so what do you think these activities will do to help the community of Joplin as a whole? Well, it gives others, you know, out in the community who work in other fields uh, a chance to come out and kind of interact with the individuals who are blind or visually impaired and kind of learn what they go through on a daily basis, you know, the challenges that they might face. And one of them today was chasing a beeping ball. <laughs> and trying to find that beeping base. I would say so. So what do you think this will do to help eliminate some of the barriers we see in the community um, between people that are visually impaired and people that are not? Well, once you have a better understanding, I remember years ago when I came, I had no understanding of what blind or visually impaired individuals went through. But as you interact with them on a daily basis, and just like having this opportunity to get out, it just gives them a better understanding of what all the individuals who are blind or visually impaired go through. And our blind or visually impaired can interact with the sighted people as well. Yes. Yeah. So what do you hope people from Arvis Bank are gonna get from participating today in Beaver Ball. We also had a couple here from Freeman Hospital today as and well. And from Freeman Hospital. Yes, well, <laughs> yes. I just wanted to put that in because yes. we had a couple here from Freeman as well. But it gives them a better understanding and they can go back and they'll tell their, their, their peers that they work with and all, they'll talk about it and then next year some more of them are gonna wanna come out and get involved in this. It's such a good works, and thank you so much for joining us today, Stephanie. Well, thank you for having us. I appreciate you coming out. Now, let's see some of the kids and adults play a little beeper ball. As you see, playing beeper ball is a little bit more than a notion, and today with me, I have Stephanie Dillon of Freeman Health Center coming and talking to me about how it actually was to play beeper ball. So how was it to play beeper ball for the first time today, Stephanie? It was a lot of fun. We really enjoyed interacting with the kids um, and really getting them to see their strengths put to use. Mm -hmm. So uh, what would you say is one of the most challenging things about playing beeper ball? Really just um, having to depend on our ears and being able to listen to the sounds and the different pitches that the bases were making um, and then being able to hear because the gym, kind of the, the, um, the auditory sounds in the gym um, is sometimes a little confusing. So just really being able to depend on our hearing. So how do you think this is, has expanded maybe your understanding of just a little part of the life that visually impaired people have to live? I think it just gives you a... Um, just a whole sense of appreciation for that sense. Um, wearing the blindfolds during the game and realizing that we could take them off but those kiddos couldn't um, really just made me appreciate that and then want to be able to help out wherever I can. So uh, are you looking forward to participating in this activity next year then? Definitely, I'll definitely be helping. Okay. Thank you so much Stephanie for your time. It's been an exciting day of beeper ball out at Macaulay High School. I'm Kristen Hanna with KGCS-TV. I'm going to send it out to Deidre Morris for more on the United Way's Day of Care. Thanks, Kristen. I'm Deidre Morris reporting from Children's Haven in Joplin, Missouri. Today is United Way's Day of Action. 
I'm here with Rhonda Berkey from Heartland's Pet Food. Rhonda, um, is this your first time volunteering for the Day of Action? It is. It's our first year volunteering. We've actually been in the area a little bit over a year now. Okay. And so what are you guys doing today at Children's Haven? Well, we've actually been putting together kits, uh, like craft kits, so mm -hmm. that they'll be easily prepared when they decide to do a craft with the children. They can just pull out a, t a toad and do the, the craft with the children. Okay. And I noticed you guys were working on crafts today. What were you making today? We were making kites, we were making flowers, we've been making chickens, just anything you can imagine that we can come up with. So what do you think um, this Day of Action does for the community and in which ways do you think it helps the Children's Haven? Well, definitely it's, it's really opened our eyes today and we've really enjoyed spending this time here with the children and making the crafts. I think it helps the children to know that there are people out there in the community that do care that are willing to come spend time with them and get to know them a little bit. And we've definitely uh, decided we're gonna do this much more often in the future. And so I hear you guys have plans for the, for the near future with helping out Children's Haven. Would you like to talk about that? We certainly do. Um, they've, they've captured our hearts today, uh, to say the least. So we've just been asking, what can we do? What more can we do to partner with Children's Haven? And we've signed up to create some meals for the kids in the evenings. And I'm certain that we'll find other things that we can do because uh, it does get you. It captures your heart, as I mentioned. That sounds great. And do um, your company, you and your company, plan on coming to do the annual Day of Action next year as well? We definitely do. We will definitely sign up again next year and hopefully every year. Well, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. It's been a full day of action. Looks like the United Way has a lot of caring and supportive volunteers ready to sign up for next year. I'm Deidre Morris reporting from KGCS TV 22. Back to you, Judy. Well, thank you very much, Deidre and Kristen, for that story. And Dwayne, it gives people a look at the type of volunteering. How it really is it, like you said, hands-on opportunity? It, it is a hands-on opportunity, getting out there and getting into those agencies. And I know we couldn't show some of the children from Children's Haven, but they actually made cookies with the children and, and really got to have some fun with the children. If you noticed in the, in the, the spotlight there, the two spotlights, all of our volunteers were wearing um, the Day of Action shirts. shirts right? and, mm -hmm. and this slogan or the what we came up with was, best day ever so um, and I think a lot of our volunteers and we internally think it was truly the best day ever thank you to Community Bank and Trust one of our business partners mm -hmm. that uh, sponsored that event and allowed us to buy t-shirts for the more than 220 volunteers that came out and supported the day of action you know this year we had just a tremendous support for Day of Action. Last year we had about 75 to 80 volunteers and as I said this year we had over 220 so more than doubling the number of volunteers is just that many more people out in the community seeing what these agencies do every day and, and touching their lives. So with that, um, we did have 21 of our United Way agencies mm -hmm. participated. So out of 36 agencies, 20 21. Of, mm -hmm. 21 of them were able to participate and find a way to get those volunteers in. Not every agency can have a project every year, and we understand that. So, but with that, and like I said, 21 agencies, and we had 45 different projects within those agencies. Um, some of it was, you know, painting, cleaning, cleaning up a playground. We had a great crew from Empire and SMB that went to the Heritage Youth Center and mm -hmm. spread mulch on the playground, power washed the playground equipment, stuff that their, their staff can't get to on a regular basis. Um, Wesley House in Pittsburgh, uh, actually that was a really cool story. We had uh, representatives from U.S. Bank 
And then also they partnered up with some of the young gentlemen that are residents at Elmakers. Mm -hmm. um, and they went out and this was a little bit more manual labor. They tore out some bushes and shrubs and, and cleaned up the front and then came back and uh, put up a fence and, and really did some, some maintenance to that building that was very much needed. And so it's kind of neat to see our business partner, U.S. Bank and their representatives partner up to work at Wesley House but then also use some of the help from the residents of Elmakers, you know, kids mm -hmm. that are trying to get their life back on track. And it was a very nice experience for, for all of those. So, um, you know, very, very good support for it. 28 companies, and I mentioned mm -hmm. several of them, but 28 companies were involved in this year's Day of Action. So it truly was a day of action. And it, I imagine that if you talk to the agencies afterwards, they probably give you a lot of positive feedback as well. They did. Um, all of them said this was uh, one of the best years, uh, best experience. Um, volunteers were very engaged mm -hmm. and, and just really enjoyed their time out at the agencies. You know, one of the things that we see, and, and I think one of the reasons that we may have seen a little bit of an increase is as we see that whether we call millennials or that that younger generation and we see this from united way they they want to support united way and they want to support our our programs and initiatives but they also like to see firsthand how those dollars at, are at work mm -hmm. um, they want to go out and they want to see okay I, I i support united way and i do my payroll deduct but i really want to see what's happening because of those dollars that I'm giving. And so it's a great experience for them. And, and we hope that um, they continue, um, as you heard Rhonda in there say, it's not just this one day, but we've exposed a new company to uh, an agency and they're gonna probably go out and find other ways to help that agency throughout the year. So many times people think of United Way as just that funding organization. Mm -hmm. Well, it's so much more than funding. It really is about finding those not just financial resources, but the human resources to make agencies and programs in our in our communities a success. Well, I know when we, I looked at your website and talked about you know ways to give, and of course, campaign or finance, but advocate and volunteer is one of they're two of the big roles that uh, you can you know may uh, not have to be able can't dig into your pocket to help, but you can dig and give us personal time. That's, that's right. Uh, you know, if you if you and we have some people that say I just I can't financially support United Way at this time, mm -hmm. but I certainly want to do other things. And so whether it's uh, they give of their time. Um, we also have people, you know, advocate for those nonprofit community, and that's something that United Way. Um, I always say that just as you look at the Chamber of Commerce as the advocate for businesses in our community, United Way should be the advocate for the nonprofit community. And how can we strengthen those services in our communities? So, on a yearly basis, ongoing basis. Uh, if someone is interested in volunteering, do you have links through your website that we see on the screen? If somebody says, well, I want to find out which agencies might need my help, they can Certainly. go to that website. And we're getting ready to go through a, a website, uh, redo our website a little mm -hmm. bit, but certainly we encourage them to go to our website. They can find a listing of all of the agencies. Um, they can also um, call our office, 417-624-0153. Oh. Uh, um, just call our office and uh, we try to partner up and we do a lot of questions, so, you know. Make sure what, the match what, is right. right. Make sure <laughs> the match is right. You know, are you interested in something with children or are you interested in, you know, that literacy and helping somebody, whether it be English as a second language um, or volunteering at, um, you know, Joplin Association of the Blind that we mm -hmm. saw earlier. Uh, and so we like to do some matching. So certainly visit the website or give us a call. Just call and help out. Right. Yeah. Well, finance is a big aspect of what your role is. And I wanted Great. to take some time today also to talk about, everybody knows the annual campaign. And traditionally it's been a big kickoff in the fall, but I understand you have some plans changing this year. For we the we do. We are, we kind of, you know, last year we started a little bit later and a lot of our volunteers and a lot of our supporters said, you know, we want to start a little bit earlier this year so that we can get a, a jump on, on the campaign. Mm -hmm. So this year we'll be um, launching our campaign on August 26th will be the campaign kickoff. And we're doing something really fun this year. Um, 
Um, you know, a lot of times I always tell people fundraising, it's, it's not hard. Sometimes we need to make it fundraising. People and, enjoy and it. And have right. fun with mm -hmm. it. And so this year we are going to do kind of a family fun night at the parking lot of the Boys and Girls Club before a Blasters game. Okay. And tying the whole theme of United Way into that, that baseball. And I think everybody's excited with the Blasters in town and um, baseball in general. Everybody's uh, kind of excited about that in, in our region. And so really tying in to that and so the theme for this year's campaign is going to be united we play united we win let's live united and, and really we're just inviting people to join us with our with the united way team and helping support these agencies and all the great work that they do well, I know you have a lot of emphasis on companies, as you mentioned, company supporting. So people are familiar in the past, the companies will have teams and ways to help right. you know, su gather support among their employees. Yeah, the, a together. lot of our uh, great business uh, partners, they'll do um, chili cook-offs or they'll do, do lots of fun, fun um, fundraisers within mm -hmm. their, their organization just to get employees engaged in, in the campaign. Um, we also have that select group of pay setter companies that do their campaign before the, the campaign kickoff okay. and kind of give us that launch. And so um, we're going to be starting those uh, the second week of July. The pay setters will be starting and then they'll run up through August uh, to that campaign kickoff and then probably beyond that. We're also going to be uh, doing a first Friday coffee in mm -hmm. October, October 2nd. Um, at our United Way office. Again, we're trying to get people into our office so that they can see what we do each and every day. And so we'll be doing a chamber coffee and at that time we'll announce the grand total of the pace setters and kind of a mid campaign report. Okay. Tell people where we are um, in that mid campaign report and how much more work we need to do to get to that point to where we can fund these agencies at levels that they can sustain that programming in, in our community. A lot of people, the whole process of funding, and you have a lot of volunteers who are helping behind the scenes with uh, reviewing those proposals and right. helping you even set the goal for the campaign. You have a lot of volunteers who are on your board and others who are helping We do, you we do. We, we changed the process several years ago. and We now actually have community investment panels that go out to each and every agency. Mm -hmm. So panels of four to five members go out and they do a site visit with the agency. They look at the programs, they, they, each individual program. Um, they meet with the staff. They meet with maybe even some clients uh, and talk about the services that they're providing. And then they make recommendations. That panel, which we had, I believe, over 75 individuals involved in those panels across mm -hmm. all of our communities. Um, they make recommendations back to the board as to funding for those various programs. Um, and they do a score sheet and um, the board will look at score sheets and that really allows them to get a, a real picture of what's going on at those agencies and at what level of funding um, we should. Of course, you know, I always say, I wish we raised the, mm -hmm. 500,000 more than what we mm -hmm. raised um, so that we could fund because some of these There's always needs beyond the financial resources. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> so, so we finished up that pro process um, back in March and this is a great opportunity as we lead into this next campaign mm -hmm. um, to kind of talk about and I think that's one of the things that we as a United Way need to do a better job of coming back to the community and say okay you invested in the campaign now here's how we took those dollars and reinvested it. People in the are community. interested in the feedback. What did yep. our dollars buy, yep. perhaps? Right. So you have some statistics exactly. and examples. So, so we asked the agencies to apply for funding, as I said earlier, in education, income, mm -hmm. health, and safety. And 30%, 37% of our funding went to education programming. Okay. That's uh, you know through. Uh, Boys and Girls Club, maybe Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, Joplin, Nayla Reed, those, those different agencies. So with that 30% of the funding going there, we reached 4,200 people, whether it be children or young adults. So those agencies are giving you numbers saying that they're this giving, program you're sponsoring reaches so many people. Exactly. Mm -hmm. We ask the agencies to not only, when they're asking for those dollars, okay, how many people did you serve last year unduplicated within that program? Okay. So uh, as I said, 4,200 for just education. the education. Mm -hmm. In the health, 25% of our funding went to health. Um, programming, community clinic, a lot of our preventative programs such as um, health programs at the Joplin Family Y and the Pittsburgh Family mm -hmm. Y. Um, so with that, um, 35,000 people were impacted by those services. Um, income, and this is something that when I looked at it, it kind of, again, the agencies apply for funding 
for programs that fit those areas, actually only 2% of our funding went to income. And I think that's probably more in the way the ap agencies applied for funding. How do you define what is an income-based program? And we're going right? to do a better job this next year of defining what does fit in their income. You know, I mm -hmm. look at some of our uh, cross lines and Wesley House that provide rent and utility assistance as well as food bank. To me, that's more of an income issue because the reason that those people are coming to them is because they don't have sustainable income, income meet their needs. to okay. meet the needs of their family. And so we'll look at that. So we'll probably see some shifting of that. But even with that 2%, are those programs reached over 600 people. Mm -hmm. um, and then finally, in the safety net pillar, um, we funded 36% of our funding went to safety net uh, services. Uh, and I say safety net, as I said, some How of those probably, right. <laughs> we, we probably need to move those over to some other areas. But um, in the safety pillar, 10,700 people were reached by United Way program funded um, agencies. And so if you add all that up, and I add up the total, and I kind right. of gave averages there, um, 50,352 people were touched one way or another by a United Way funded program. Yeah. That's an amazing stat. And you look at our, our region and, and demographics of our region, pretty safe to say that about one in five individuals in some way have been touched by a United Way agency or a United Way program. And so I think that the work that we're doing, we're, we're, we're getting there, you know, I think there's so much more that we can do. Mm -hmm. um, in, in some funding lists last year, we had a number of new programs that would have been great fund programs to fund, but limited resources, we wouldn't be able to, to fund them adequately to make sure that they're getting the job done. So, But what an amazing stat, one in five people. So reaching a lot of people, as you say, throughout the community, and the people who are donating are wanting to know, where's my money going? It's helping right. through these programs, and eventually not only a program, but a person. Exactly. And tying that around. So, And a lot of things uh, happening in the next few months, and with the kickoff, the campaign, uh, United Way, as I said, giving services year-round through these agencies. Uh, if people have questions, give us your website, your uh, phone number. Sure. again how they can try to find out more information that we always encourage people to reach out to us our, our website is www.unitedway spelled out unitedwaymocan.org mm -hmm. okay. that's m-o-k-a-n and then they can also call our office at 417-624-0153 so um, just reach out to us um, if you have any questions uh, you know i always tell people the best way to find out the answer to a question is just to pick up the phone and give me a call. You'll have people there to give those answers or give the right person to reach if they yep. have those questions. So. Exactly. Well, Dwayne, I'd like to thank you very much for providing this information today. Uh, it gives us a chance to look at not only the special day we had where people were giving help, but what goes on year-round at the United Way. Yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And I'd like to thank you for joining us this week on Newsmakers as we find out about the United Way and their programs and what's happened throughout the summer this year. I'm Judy Stiles. I hope you can join me again next week at the same time on the station. We'll see you then.